so hello everyone welcome back to the daily lead code practice session so let's start with today's problems okay the first problem for today from the easy bracket is to check if the two strings if the two given strings s and t are an anagram of each other like if we have a string s and a t if t is an anagram of s uh, if that's true then we have to return true Otherwise, we have to return false. And has anyone tried this problem? Or any other, they have idea about how to do this? Could you share the screen? I am sorry, I didn't know about that. Is it visible now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so the problem is about uh, two strings, uh, and we have to return true or false based on the condition whether the string T is an anagram of S. So, has anyone tried this one, or any has, has idea? Yeah, I have two approach for this one. One, the first one is to sort uh, each string and then uh, <clears throat> compare them because it's anagram. So one we sort uh, and if uh, two string are equal, then you know we they must be the uh, <clears throat> anagram. Yeah, and what was the time and space complexity for that? That would be uh, uh, log of uh, n. Um, I mean, assume that uh, the first length is n and the second length is m. So that would be m log m plus n log n, depending whatever long you saw them so, uh, and you compare them, you know, the same. What will happen if the length of the two strings are different? Uh, uh, can those two be the anagram? Uh, if yeah, if the length of two strings are different, then uh, then no. So, in our case, even if if the lengths are different, then probably uh, we don't need to check any further. We can just stop there, right? Right. Uh, and uh, if you are sorting both the strings and we know they are of same string length, uh, then the time complexity is n log n, considering n is the length of a string, right? Yeah. And uh, the other approach that you are talking about? Uh, do the uh, character count. So in this case, it <clears throat> is say only a lower case. So we only mm -hmm. need 26, uh, an array of 26, and then do the character count. Uh, right. Yeah. For the first string, and then the, for the second string, we walk through that again. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, we decrement, if we see the, um, <clears throat> The character will decrement the count, and if the mm -hmm. count happens to be uh, negative one, right. then we know that uh, it's not an anagram. Is it? Yeah, right. Uh, it's not an anagram. Correct. I hope uh, both of the approaches are clear to everyone. If not, then probably we can discuss a bit more on those. Anyone has any doubts on those? No. Right. And one of the follow-up questions here is, what if the input contains Unicode characters? How would you adapt your solution to such case? For that, we can use a hash table. And hash keep table? a count in hash table for each character. OK. And why hash table? So it will provide a often lookup. 
and what about other properties so basically insertion will also provide o of 1 right. that will be asymptotic but then to yeah okay. so do we really need a overhead of having a hash table or rather hash map or any other class as such because classes as such will take a bit of overhead in terms of management as well as memory storage whereas the primitive data types are uh, pretty much you know uh, less space consuming as well as uh, time consuming so initially uh, you know in the original string it's original case it's written that uh, assume that the string contains only lower case characters right and uh, what uh, we mentioned was we can take only 26 characters which we uh, know right a to z now what if we are considering all the unicode characters is there an upper bound on the unicode characters do we know how many unicode characters are there is it 256 right, so whatever it is like it can be two if it is i'm not sure what is 256 or something aska has 120 and that but it will be fixed the character sets are fixed Right, so even if it's 256 or uh, 512 or 1024 or 120, it's fixed. So we don't need to actually create a hash map. We can just create an array of size of the Unicode characters. Right? The lookup time it will be same. That it's just that the overhead of managing that class objects will be reduced. So this are probably you can try. You know, if you are writing this program. Just go ahead and try this uh, same thing using hash map and just see the time complexity or time taken uh, by that in all the cases mm -hmm. and just try the same thing using a normal array and see the time difference. So I'll see a huge jump like it's somewhere in the range of because when I did it using hash map for 26, it, took, it was around 22% uh, slower, 22% faster than all the other solutions. But when I converted it into an array, it was around 80% faster than all the other solutions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. in such small... Hey, Puni, just one thing here. When you said in Unicode, uh, if you use an array, because Unicode usually are 16-bit, right? So like 16-bit, maybe like... 16-bit, yes. Yeah. So it will be like almost 8K, such a big array, or maybe more than that, you know? 2 is to 16... So it'll be huge array. Yeah, it'll be huge array, yeah. but it'll still be constant. Yeah, that's true. Okay, no problem. Thank you. In in this case, the problem is we are not given with what is the maximum uh, you know length of the strings which can be there. It can be it can go beyond the limit also. We'll have some duplicates also. If it's uh, given like we have a maximum length of suppose three thousand characters of S, then probably yes, hash map will make more sense. Because for sure we will not be going into all the characters of Unicode. If the length of the string is only 2000 characters. Yeah. Or 10,000 or 20,000. So that's a decision that you have to take while coding. Yeah. Yeah. In this as there was no limits given. And uh, you know the requirements are same. It probably makes more sense to have an array. One of the other things which I have faced personally in a lot of, in this, it's a small problem, easy problem, it will not make much sense. Mm -hmm. But uh, in some of the medium and hard problem, what I have seen is if you use an array uh, or use a hash map instead of an array where it's very simple, sometimes it does give you a TLE because of the complex program logic. Mm -hmm. Not in this program, but in some of the other programs, yeah. especially the hard ones. Right. Okay, no problem. Thank you. And one more thing, I just Googled for like Unicode characters. So there are 137,000 Unicode characters. So if we consider all of them, then an array will not be a efficient one. Right. So that is based on, you know, how many characters you are in the input string. As we are just discussing, if you know the limit of the character string, it's suppose 5,000, 10,000, 50,000 only, then definitely hash map will make much more, much more sense. Yes. Right. But if you if there's no limit on the string, like it can go to two million also, then probably having a constant array will make more sense. That's uh you know as some uh, design decision that you'll have to take while implementing. Okay. Okay. 
and uh, i have like a follow up question sure. how can we how can we solve it like without using an array or a, or even an hash map what is there any other approach yeah i think we discussed earlier i don't know uh, sorting it out and then just checking whether those two are exactly the same let's say like we don't need, don't need to sort it to if we don't need to sort it to yeah we don't need to i don't want to sort it <clears throat> not using additional mm -hmm. array not using additional hash map uh oh i think uh, the use a uh, two pointer <laughs> get cow you know get cow the 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 character <laughs> one by one i can think of an n square approach like you take each character from the left like a then uh, find the first uh, instance of a on the right one and then mark it with some uh, center and value and then probably do it for both you know the entire string and tree string and then if you have anything left in the t that means it's not uh, an anagram okay fair enough what about um uh, is there any order of n solution <coughs> so i want to ask one thing like uh, uh, if we if, are uh, finding a index of giving a character then it is a n square approach like we right, know so it, it it can be if uh, the suppose you have a s string as anagram and the t string is exact reverse of it so it so can be yeah, it can be n square to search that to search the index of that character in a string right, right. It, it, in the worst case it can be n square Well, like a, I, I think we, that, uh, sorry, mm -hmm. I, you know, quickly, I think that, you know, we don't want to use array, we can use the bit, right? Let's say this one, <clears throat> we have 26 characters, then an integer is 32 bit, then an integer would be sufficient, wouldn't it? Let me see, uh, but we need to keep a count. Yeah, bit will not okay. happen because that yeah. counts are required. Yeah. So I had this idea after uh, actually... Uh, Gaurav asked this question and I haven't tried it. Since the character counts will match, can we XOR them and they will cancel them out automatically and final result will be zero? Even in that case, we'll need to keep extra space, right? We'll need to keep the counts. What Gaurav is asking is if we don't need to keep the counts also. No, I, I, I believe like Roger is saying like just use a constant uh, variable where you are like uh, uh, keeping uh, like uh, doing the zor of every character yeah that's what i meant like don't keep anything just start with the first one continue doing that because they are come like you know cumul what is they call associative so they will cancel it out eventually i think one one approach which i just got with uh, this discussion is uh, we can run the you know just take each character at a time like a b c and this and for in each of the s and t just find the counts like in the first one find the count of a which is 3 and then go to t find the count of t uh, a in the t which will be 3 that, that way the time complexity will be 26 times n and uh, space we don't need any extra space except for the counter and also like a s uh... <coughs> Roger mentioned Zor sounds like a very interesting approach to me because eventually like all of the characters will cancel themselves out. So hopefully like that should work too. One other interesting approach that uh, I found earlier was we know how many, we know the length of input S. Okay. So let's say in this case, the length is eight, seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. What if we generate prime numbers um maybe seven like maybe 10 different prime numbers if we know the prime numbers we take a character and assign a prime number to that character and then keep uh, uh, multiplying so there is a like prime number approach that also like we can use okay uh, we, we can take a character multiply it by a prime number and then keep uh, take another character multiply it and then add it okay so it will come it will kind of generate a, a unique hash code, which will come as a constant. Um, sorry, I did not get it. 
like you're saying, if you have, suppose let's take the prime numbers uh, 11, then you're saying that you'll multiply A with 11, which is essentially one into 11, right? Yep. And then next time you'll do uh, what? Uh, A into 11 plus N. Is that what you're asking, you're saying? And need a prime number too. So every character will associate with a prime number. Yes, yeah, so like we will associate every character with a prime number. And then for each character, we know like what prime number it is and then keep multiplying by it. Uh, let's take a second example, which is like easy enough to understand. So I think Gaurav, you are trying to explain a unique prime multiplication. Yes, unique prime multiplication that can also be done. That's what I think. Yeah. Okay, so, so we assign each character a prime unique prime number, unique, and then yeah. yes. Yeah. Say so here in this case, like we have uh, A, we have <clears throat> we don't have like B, like yeah, but we can we can keep going like that way, but like just take the characters whatever are here three, and then we have C. The only problem yeah. will be the overflow, I guess. Yeah, overflow, yeah. Yeah, because there's no limits or constraints on the length of the string. But yeah, I'll have to look and die. I'm not yes. sure. But if the strings are like not, not very big, like maybe we can just use the prime multiplication and then if the <clears throat> multiple if the result of both the string matches, okay, they are an agram. I guess like we can continue. Could we try the XOR, you know, for this example, see how it works? Sure. So let's see example of RAT. So Roger, correct me if I'm, uh, you know, wrong somewhere based on your approach. So what you're saying is uh, you will have R, as one, right? And the first one. Okay. Actually, so uh -huh. R will have its own some unique value as an integer, right? Uh, right. All the so, okay, X are... equal to, so what's X equal to, oh, uh, I understand what you're saying. X, uh, R is suppose a number uh, from A to Z, whatever is its uh, number, we'll just take it R. And uh, we have A, which is X or here. Then we'll have X or T, we'll have X or of C, X or of A, and X or R. So this R will cancel out with this, this A will get cancelled out with this, but these two will not cancel out each other. Yeah. I mean, so that is they important. will, right, right. That's, that makes sense. Yes, I just give it a try. Like if you, if you take like two A's in the first string, two B's in the second string, it will result in zero. Yeah, that, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. A and B, B. This will. This will still show yeah. that it's an anagram. Then we need some way to differentiate between what's in the left side and what's in the right side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Can we do somehow like uh, XOR of everything on the left hand side and XOR of everything on the right hand side and see if they are equal? Yes, like if you if you try to do that on the left, it will come zero. On the right, it will come zero. Yeah, that's possible. Yeah, I don't think like this is possible. Yeah, correct. So Yash is asking, there's a medium question related to anagram. Okay, so everyone can try that group anagram question. Okay. So let's continue with the, the next problem for today. So that's from the medium bucket. And uh, the problem says that uh, you're given an array 
Okay, let's suppose the error is one to one, and it's a circular array uh, in the direction of the traversal. So you have one to one, and then afterwards it again starts from one to and one. What you have to do is uh, find the greatest element uh, in the order of traversal. So, uh, like for first element one, uh, the nearest greatest element after one is two. For two, there is no element which is greater than this after this one, right? And for one, if we do a circular move uh, based on the conditions that are given in the array uh, in the question, you see the next greatest element for the one is also again two, right? So that's what is given in the output. So for the first one, the greatest element is two. That's what we have written here. For two, there is no greater element than this, so we have written minus one. For one, uh, if we do in a if we go in a circular fashion. Next element, which is greater than this one, is coming at two, so we have to two. Okay, so this is what we have to find out. We are given any kind of array, and we have to find out what is the next greater element in the array, given the condition that uh, you can do uh, circular travels. Sir. Approach suggestions. Anyone has tried this? Anyone, guys? So, I think it, the my approach is for each. Uh, I'm gonna create an extra array, and mm -hmm. uh, for each uh, element, I would. Uh, store the uh, next greater value. Mm -hmm. So let's try to do that. Uh, sure. That would be the answer. Okay, so let's say we have three elements one, two, one. What are we planning to do? Uh, so the first, yeah, I don't know. I just got for the proof false, right? So I'm at index zero, and I find that the first uh, next greater element value is two, so I put two in there. Right. So yeah, that's a proof uh, false. Absolutely, you know, like that's a brute force technique of saying, you know, I'll take first element and then see whatever is afterwards. Then I go with the second and see what is afterwards. But in this case. You just don't have to go afterwards. You have to also return back and start from here. So that is n square time complexity, right? That's a valid approach. It's just that the time complexity is higher. So let's see how we can improve that the time complexity part. Okay. Any other approach, guys? One of the uh, interesting point here uh, to note is that it's a circular array, right? So does that give any, uh, you know, pointers on how how we manage or how we traverse through a circular array? I, yeah, the same approach that I did before, but like, you know, as I uh, travel to the next element, and if it I, this element happened to be uh, smaller than or equal, my, then maybe I don't need to, to go all the way. Because, uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I would try to cut it down. I don't need to go, you know, all the way to n square because. So one of, one of the interesting facts about a circular array uh, is if you append uh, the array with it itself, Right? So this is how the circular array will go, right? If you just create a duplicate of array afterwards, you, instead of you know trying to go in a circular fashion, you can create a linear array of size 2n and uh, try to find uh, you know whatever you have to do in the circular array. Is that correct? Now, this problem reduces to a normal array and finding greater argument in a normal array. Right? So, 
if we consider here, let's start from two. We know the next greater element will be two. For next two, we know there's nothing greater than this. We can have minus one. For this one, if we go in the forward direction only, we can see there's a next two. So we know it's a two. Now these elements, we do not actually need to process because these are the ones which are just used for computation purposes. For ease out or uh, traversal logic for circular array, right? Now, do we know how to uh, calculate the greater element for a normal array? Let's see, we have given an array. We have been given an array one, two, eight, two, and one. So, how do we, you know, get the greater element uh, for a normal array which is next to it? Like for this case, we'll have uh, two, eight, minus one. Minus one, minus one. So one approach can be, what if we traverse the second array and store the element and there it's like respective index in a hash map. So you're talking okay. about this one, this part or? No, no like or uh, this one? Uh, the input, input array, whatever, whatever is the input array. Um, uh, the one to one. Yeah, one, one. Yeah, one to one. Yeah, like, okay. no, uh, yeah, we don't need to do that. Okay, so, uh, sorry about that. I, I thought like there are like two, I was confusing it with a different problem. So what we can do here, uh, the approach you just mentioned about like two N, we can optimize it uh, by traversing like whatever the index we are on from that index plus one to less than length of array, we have to traverse for sure. Okay, so if there are, are n elements, we have to traverse n minus one elements to find the next greater element. Given it is a circular array, if the index in, increase goes beyond the size of the array, we can mod it by the length of the array. Right, so that, that's the way how we can uh... Or traverse the circle. Uh, I'm yeah. just asking the next step. Like uh, that's clear. Like I think uh, what you explained is perfectly fine on how to traverse a circular array. Uh, the next part of the problem is how to find the greater element for a simple array. Yeah, we can use the stack. Okay, so uh, let, let's take an example like one, yeah, so... two, eight, two, and three. And how? What will you? do with the stack so we will put the item on the stack and compare the next item with the top so and start, from where them. from where will you start from the top first element or last element or where will you stop it from? so will the traversal be like this or element this? so we will put okay. the first element on the stack okay so now uh, we'll check for the second element mm -hmm. and check with the top of the uh, stack Correct. Two is greater than one. Yeah. So the next element for one is two. Correct. And now we remove the one from the stack mm -hmm. and put two on the stack. Okay. And now uh, we will repeat the same thing. Right. Until, That's right. until we find if, uh, okay, so now let's move forward. So now next element is eight. So we will compare the, the top of the stack with the eight. Now put eight on the stack. And now uh, check uh, with the two. So two is not greater mm -hmm. than... Uh, uh, two, two is not greater than eight. eight. So we'll put the two on the stack. Mm -hmm. Okay. And same for three. Okay. And now, uh, now we are done with all the elements. Now we will check, uh, we will uh, process our stack if there are any item in the stack. So for those items, we so don't- You will process this three and uh, set the maximum for this two as three, right? For this one, yeah. right? Oh yes, for, for, yes. For, uh, for two, yes, definitely, yeah, three. So stack at the end of that, the, the first uh, first loop, so the stack will have eight and three, yeah. So uh, 
what you can do is just pop up all the elements from the stack and then set it to add, minus one. add the minus one for these two these items. Right, that's correct. So the same approach, uh, what we can do is for a circular array, if you have one, two, one, you can create a separate array, one, two, one, one, two, one, and then just find out uh, what is the next highest element for the first half. You, know, you just have to calculate this for the first half. Once it is done, that's your final answer. So if you create a, another array of duplicate, then that's <coughs> already 2n. Right, that's 2n. Does it change your time complexity? Yeah, the time complexity is still, you know, 2n, right? <coughs> I thought we want to do it better than 2n. We can do it. Uh, I'm just, you know, doing up the base work. Like we know that we have, we need 2n space, right? We actually don't need to have this. We can just play with the indexes. So let's see a different way of looking at this thing. Okay, let me just is it out and then I can so we have one two one and then one two one this is our only physical array so let's say index is zero one two and if it is it was extended it would have been three it would have been four it would have been five right now can we look at this indexes and create a relation like if the size of this is three Right. Anytime we are going to five or two or one, we just need to get I mod three. That will be your index in the actual array. But logically we can look at it as three third index also. Like if you're looking at the third index in this new two N array, that actually will correspond to three mod three, which is zero at value in the data array. Does it make sense? <clears throat> yeah. Right. So anything, if you are after this one, anything which you do is just mod of length. So three mod three will be zero, one, two, and you can just continue on top of a check three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and eight. in this case, we don't require anything more than two, so that's fine. But uh, in, in general case, you can just keep on repeating and you'll get uh, the repeat of indexes. Uh, uh, hi, uh, can we do with one more example? Like any other example? So let's create an example, like let's say one, six, two, four, right? Yes. Is that okay? And the second part, I'll just write it one, six, two, and four. We'll go ahead with back with the stack approach. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So we have one here. I'll put in one. The next element to be checked is six, right? Mm -hmm. So is six greater than the top of the stack? Yes. So I'll what I'll do is I'll just uh, pop three from pop one from here, mm -hmm. and mark the next element as its uh, nearest greater element uh, after one, right? And as I don't have any other element in the stack, I'll just go ahead and now push six onto the stack. Does it make sense? Yeah. Right. Now the next element of the process is two. Uh, two is smaller than this one, so I don't know what the answer for that will be. So I'll just put in two here because I'm not sure in future there may be some other element which is greater than this. Right now, I'm not sure, so I'll just keep it reserved in the stack for future purposes. Now I'm coming to four. Now, for four, I can look at the top of the stack and see oh, yes, uh, two is smaller than this, and there was no element after it, so for sure, four is the next element which is greater than two. I'll pop it from there okay, and mark four as the next element, which is greater than two. Okay, now coming to four, yeah, coming to four, uh, I have to process four and I, I can see the top of the element, uh, top 
of the array is smaller than this okay uh, sorry greater than this so that will definitely not be answer i'll i cannot do anything i'll just keep on and push for here right now i'll go to one right so again one will become answer you know one will become on top of here now i have six so now you see we are going ahead and repeating this part yeah right? but now what will happen is this six which was not able to or this four which was not able to get processed earlier now it will process in the order afterwards so just instead of circularly you know transacting we are moving ahead in the direction for easier traverse and and the answers will just be same you will not be able to uh, you know you will not find a scenario where you the answers will change so let's assume six or uh, the one you yeah, the next element to be process six so you will just pop one and set it as six again you will mm -hmm. pop four now and set it as six six right and the six will still remain there right so once you are done with all the elements this way you'll find that these are the six elements and the six will not have any other next greater element because that's a largest element in the array also so you can just pop this six out and set it as minus 1 uh so uh, we'll we'll just process the elements of the first uh, first array not the duplicates one which we have created 1624 but we did we will we will have to we will have to because there will be a, there may be an element in the ending part which for which the you know higher uh, the greater element will be in some earlier part right? because when you're going circular direction so in this mm -hmm. case like you see four has a higher element which is six so after six uh, like in the second array after six two and four are also there we right. have to put those in a stack as well right you can put those but you'll still get uh, the answer which is required so yeah the answer is already created we'll reach end right. of the array and uh, so the answer which we get is the final answer correct okay. so finally you'll have four which is not processed and what you can do is just check if four is already processed or not if there is an answer already assigned to four you don't need to update it okay okay makes sense So for okay. who are actually really interested to learn more, so you can search for the monotonic stack. All right. Okay, I think we can go ahead with the next problem for today. Uh, or if there are any questions for this one. Okay, let me share my screen again. We can move on to the next problem. Okay, so the last problem for today uh, from medium bucket again is uh, based on contiguous arrays. So we are given a binary array. Uh, it has all these zeros and ones, and we have to find the maximum length of uh, sub array or continuous sub array with equal number of ones and zeros. So essentially, uh, if you take any part. They should have same number of zeros and same number of ones, right? And it's given that the length of the binary array will not exceed fifty one. So any ideas, approaches? Anyone has already tried this one? Uh, yeah, I have an idea in that. Go ahead. So, uh, so what I did in this question is uh, usually in contiguous arrays. I always go for the pre-sum approach, like, uh, like compute the what what would be the pre-sum uh, of that range, and uh -huh. and then uh, and then yeah, that pre-sum or that and then use those pre-sum in calculating further. For example, uh, in here, z uh, let let's say like zero is equal to minus one. Let's update zero okay. minus one, and then when we are uh, calculating as a uh, when when we are doing the sum minus one and one, we'll be getting a zero. And uh, similarly, if zero has occurred before, 
like we need to create a hash map if zero has occurred before then uh, we'll 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 take that uh, maximum range like from where like we need to uh, update the value as uh, zero's value as uh, like index from where it has started and then we can okay. get the range like uh, high as high range we want of this term uh, to be like uh, having a one so that's one approach which i am thinking right yeah. any other approach that's a similar approach that i have also done now so i'll just uh, there are a couple of things that uh, you know probably we can discuss later uh, before you know if there is any other approach we can discuss that first a brute force approach can be take uh, all the sub arrays of length, even length and then check like if they have uh, same number of zeros and ones right I'm not sure this approach we talked yet, but uh, I'm thinking if it's zero, we treat it as negative one. Then uh, we we iterate from left to right. If if it becomes zero again, if the sum becomes zero, that means we have the equal number of uh, zero and one. That's correct. Uh, that's, that's not the only scenario where you will have equal number of ones and zeros. If you reach zero, that's not the only scenario. So let's let me share my screen. Uh, I'll share the whiteboard. Right. Okay. You can have a scenario like zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. Right. So here, if I assume all the zeros as minus one, so what will the cumulative sum is minus one? then zero, then one, right? And then uh, it's login be zero, then it will be one, two, one and zero, right? So every time you see a zero, right? What you're doing is you're checking it with the start of the array because this is your cumulative sum array, right? But there's another scenario, do you see this one is here? Just compare it with any other one. You'll see the array in between those that also have same number of zeros and ones, right? So zero is not the only scenario where you can have same number of uh, ones or zeros in the sub array. Uh, if you have the continuous sum equal, you'll again find that similar kind of scenario where you have number of elements, which is one and zero same. Right. Just go ahead with this zero and this zero. You can also find again this one and zeros having one and one uh, as the number of uh, elements. Now comparing this one with this one, you'll find there are two zeros and two ones. Right. But now here, if you see last zero, that is going to compare with the start of the array. So you'll find all this array, the entire array is actually an equal sum there. Right. Is this clear till now? Mm. Can you can you repeat? Sure. So let's start with this uh, clean slate. Right. So is this clear till now? How we have computed this cumulative sum array? Yeah. Right. So. So every time you see zero, right, that means you're comparing that sub array which started from the first index and it has equal number of zeros and ones, right? Let's take this one. You have one zero, one one, right? Uh, let's assume this zero. You have two zeros. Two zero and two ones. That's correct. Is this correct, right? Yes. Right. Now the other scenario where you can have equal number of elements in between 
or where the all the elements nullify the each other because we are taking one and minus one. So essentially, if you have equal number of ones and zeros, uh, they nullify each other's effect. Is when you have these cumulative sums as equal. Right. So if you compare the elements in between, you will find there are two zeros and two ones. This holds true. So we are not considering the first element. Uh, it is one zero. One one zero, not like that, that. Depends on how you, that depends on how you create the cumulative sum. So if during the accumulation you include this one sum, so it will not consider now this one. But if okay. you hold the value which is only till previous, then yes, it will have. Okay, so okay. It only depends on how you create the cumulative sum. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I was thinking, it's like think like we have a target as zero. Whenever we reach the target as zero, so that's how we have one, one, uh, one, uh, one sum which is like equal number of zero and equal number of one. The target of zero will give you a back summary if it is starting from the first index. Yes. But if it's not starting from first index, then you will have to consider somewhere where the, the sums are equal. Hey, Puneet, like this yeah. one, this also holds true for if there are like two zeros in the accumulative sum. So let's say the zero at the second position and then the zero at the last position. Zero at the second. Yes, yes. Everything it holds ev true for all the zeros also. So every same sum which is getting repeated. Right. So if you say this zero and this zero. You'll find all the elements in between will have equal length or same number of ones and zeros. Now, zero is a special case. Zero is uh, something where uh, it actually includes all the elements before that. Right? Because if you consider the elements before this also, so zero will actually give you sum of all the elements starting with the first. But if you want to consider any every subset which has zero or which has the uh, same number of elements, you can take all those combination of zero and you'll get the uh, number same, the equal number of ones and zeros in between also. Right? And any any two sum, like one and one here also. We'll hold true for this one also. This is actually another uh, uh, lead code medium problem based on this, like how many sub arrays are there which have uh, same number of zeros and ones. That is based on this exact idea. Is this clear or no? I think. Uh, yeah, I got clear. Thank you. Uh, others? Is it still confusing or not? Okay. I'll assume everyone is clear on this. Okay. So as I was saying, the the variate problem of this is uh, you know finding how many number of pairs or how many contiguous sub arrays are there which have equal number of zeros and ones. Uh, same approach, what you have to do is just iterate from left to right and uh, create a hash map of this. So you have minus one sum coming up one time, then you have zero coming up one time. Every time you have zero, you just count increment your total count by one because zero is special case where all the elements from the start are also counted as one sub array, uh, continuous sub array, right? Now you have one, you will say one has one element. Now once you did zero, what you can do is find out uh, how many zeros are already there. So there was already one zero, right? So we can increment that. And because this is a zero, we'll increment it one again, right? And we'll increment the count of zeros as two, right? There were two zeros before this one. Okay, then we can continue and set it as one. There was one already. We'll increment one more. 
set one as two, that two endpoints where the sum reaches uh, two. Once we reach here, we already know there are two ones already. So we can create either this combination as a contiguous array or this combination as a contiguous array. So what we do is just take this one and sum it up. Right? And we do this for all the elements which are repeating. Now for zero, we'll have two plus one. So that will give you the total number of contiguous subarrays, which will, give, which will have equal number of ones and zeros. Does it make sense guys or it was too fast? Yeah. So in a hash map, uh, when you consider uh, the second one, how you means like the third one and the second one, there I just need more explanation like which decision make you to take which one, which one we are considering and which one we are not considering in the hash table while I'm taking every every element is going to into hash table. So hash table is essentially to find out uh, how many same sums have been visited before. Because as we just discussed, if we are in the within the same range, there are two elements which are having having exactly same cumulative sum. Mm -hmm. The sub array in between that is definitely going to have equal number of arrays, equal number of ones and zeros, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm here. I need to know how many zeros are there before me. So what I'm doing is just storing that zeros in hash map. Now, as I said, I can create a sub array in between this one, or I can create a sub array in between this one, right? Yeah. Both of them will definitely have number of uh, ones and zeros as same, right? Yeah. Right. So that is what I'm doing here. Just trying to find out how many are already there and how many arrays can I create, sub arrays can I create. That's going to, that is being helped uh, by the hash map. Yeah. And, this, this yeah, and yeah. third element you added as a one, right? Oh, okay. Whatever decision you took for zero, same decision you are taking for one as well. Okay. It's a decision same for all the elements which are going to be recurring. Okay. We have one and one here. Mm -hmm. So I'll just take one this element. So then zero and zero, there's one this. So essentially I'm doing this array, this array, this array, this array, using these sums. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Okay, uh, any other question guys? Is there a base case for your hash tape? Hash map. Uh, base case as in? Like base case, like once you once we start uh, the program, like do we need to initialize the hash map with something? Uh, for easier, uh, you know, computation, you can initialize your hash map zero with uh, one because that's the sum before anything is calculated. What so is I zero? Have, there are two ways. What is zero and one? Zero is so. Uh, Hash map is essentially cumulative sum of zero and there's one entry which is already going to be there, which is if there's no element in the element included in the array. So, so zero is the sum, like the key is the sum. Yes. This is and the then sum. the value is the number of times like we have seen that sum. Correct. Okay. And rest you can actually traverse to the cumulative sum array and calculate how many counts, uh, how many times you can find the same, uh, you know, sub array with the same number of zeros and ones with the same logic. Like if you are at a position which you see zero, what you can just see is only, you know, how many times you already see zero, that's one. And just add that to your counter, there's a counter. So you just have to keep the counts, that's all. Now, you know, in this problem, like you have to figure out the maximum length of the array. Right. So coming back to this problem, uh, what you can do is to find the maximum problem. So let's say we have an array of cumulative sum. Let's say we have a minus one, zero, one, zero, one, one, and zero. Right. So when you're creating a hash map, 
So if you want to find out what is the maximum uh, distance between two numbers, what will you do? Like first you have suppose an entry zero, which is as index one, and you find an element again zero. What will you do? You'll find the distance between these two elements, right? And that suppose is suppose uh, three. Let's assume that, okay? But if in future you see another zero, with which, you, with which of these two elements you think it will find the larger length, right? It will find the, the larger length with this one. So Previous once we have set, you right. So the first one, once we have set an uh, index for uh, that sum anywhere in our hash map, we don't need to update. So essentially what it will do is give us the first time we are able to see that sum and till the last time we are able to see that sum, we'll be able to calculate what is the longest distance. That will give us the largest array with the same number of ones and zeros. So in this case, like, makes sense. In, in this yeah, case, sir. like in this case, like we will initialize. So, so the array on the top is the cumulative sum. That's the cumulative. Sum. Okay. Yes. Now we will initialize our array with what zero minus one. Uh, which array are we talking about? Like, sorry, hash map. So hash map will be empty. Okay. And then we'll uh, start creating the hash map. Like it will, as and when we progress, we'll, we'll create. So let's say we have minus one. Minus one is at zero position. Okay. Then we have zero. Zero is first position. One is at second position. Now as we have zero, so I'll use the position of the, yeah. yeah. So while while we are at, at zero, okay. Mm -hmm. While we are at the zero, okay, we know mm -hmm. that the length at up up <laughs> until like this point of time is two. Right. So because zero is a special case, zero special case being. Uh, you don't need an entry from the hash map also to calculate it. So you can so how, just compute it from. Yeah. How can I figure out like uh, um, up until like uh, when I encounter the first zero, like what's the length? Okay. So that's what, so you just take the, all the elements before it. So yeah. if index it's uh, index is one. So I plus one will be your length. Okay. If and it's one better approach is yeah. One better approach is to initialize the hash map with zero mm -hmm. as minus one. Okay. So so we are saying that okay we have seen zero at the index minus one, mm -hmm. which is the invalid index. Okay. So okay, that okay. can that can help like with uh, simplifying the problem. We then we don't need to consider about zero being a special case. Yeah, that that's also one of the ways we can do it. Like uh, if we are initializing with zero with one, we'll have to uh, do uh, the index which we are, we are we reach. For example, here we reach index three, three minus uh, one, then plus one. We have to zero with minus one. Zero yeah. with minus one. Minus zero one, like yeah. Direct minus one um, for that. Yeah. Okay. Like uh, let's say the hash map is empty. Okay. We we haven't start processing the array. Uh, okay, so we initialize zero with minus one to indicate, okay, that we have seen zero at the negative index, which means we haven't yet started processing the cumulative sum array. That's correct. Okay. I hope that is clear. I think there's some confusion there still, right? So for me here, we have uh, actually we are considering zero as minus one. Whenever we see zero, we take it as minus one. But we haven't updated our array as minus one. Correct. Sorry, this this array? Yes. So, when I see so this is the cumulative sum array. This is I'm not uh, considering the actual array. I'm just assuming that uh, we have already computed the Cumulative sum array. Okay. So this is your cumulative sum array, not the original array. Just to clarify, if there's a confusion, so there will be some in you know elements before that. Let's say zero, one. Uh, then we have one here. 
you have one. zero here, right? And then one, right? So something like this, which will create a cumulative sum array, some like this. And then we are processing this cumulative sum array to find out uh, the uh, sub arrays with the same number of zeros and ones. Oh, because I have, uh, I, I was also having a similar proof, which making all zeros as minus one in the original array. So, so just to be clear, okay, uh, we are taking zeros as minus one when we are calculating this uh, cumulative sum array. Okay, but what we are putting in the hash map is just for initializing the hash map. It says sum, cumulative sum and then the index. Here minus one is a invalid index because like that index doesn't exist. But we are just saying that okay, this is what like we are we will initialize our hash map with. So I'm just trying to make sure like uh, this approach can work for other questions also. If we do. The point you said is in push if like if we don't have one zero, we have something else five three minus one two four. Then what's the goal? Like, uh, do you have any specific problem in mind? In, in, yeah, taking this example only zero one one zero. Uh, so if if initially if I put all zeros as minus one and uh, start my hash map with uh, for index uh, for some zero equal to uh, minus one, I can do the same thing, and then the same uh, technique can be applied to other contiguous arrays. I'm not sure so if I follow Puneet, that. Uh, so, uh, Puneet, can you uh, can you help me because I can't do a white right horse? Sure. sure. Yeah, to take some example of zeros and ones. Yeah, so change or uh, can you recreate all zeros as minus one? Okay, now in the hash map, just put uh, zero as uh, uh, minus one. This is uh, the finding the uh, longest length mm -hmm. of zeros and ones. So initially, now my uh, now so uh, so my cumulative sum is now uh, first time is one. Now starting from the second array which we just created. So my cumulative sum is one. I have not okay. seen any time in my array. So I will make one as zero in my hash map. All right. Now I got uh, uh, now I got minus one, and I also keep on checking if I, if my cumulative sum will become a zero or not. So now next time my cumulative sum becomes zero and I have seen zero earlier also at index minus one. So the total length will become two. So this is one answer, one potential answer. Then I will go one step further. So now my uh, now my cumulative sum will again become minus one. So I have not seen minus one in my array. So I will put uh, two here. Then I got, uh, then my cumulative sum become uh, zero again. Now I've seen like in my array, so this is the best answer I can get, which is now four. And yeah, now that, that is exactly the same thing I think Gaurav was also explaining. Uh, what yeah. you are doing is just doing a cumulative sum while you are going. We were for mm -hmm. the sake of simplicity, we're just creating that sum and explaining it out. I think the approach is exactly the same. Uh, what Goro was explaining, you know, initializing zero with minus one for the sake of calculating the length is three. Mm -hmm. so, so my point was that now if we don't have one zero, we have some other array also. This approach will work. Then we are finding some k. Here the sum uh, like k was zero. Like we are trying to find zero sum. There could be some like four. The same approach can work there also. It's not now limit to one yes. one yeah. zero. Yeah. It will work like where, like that approach you are trying to figure out continuous sub array which sums up to k. Yeah, maximum. Yep. So so th these are like different questions on lead code itself. Okay, this approach once you get it, like yeah, it will work for sure for those kind of problems. Yeah. There are already like different variations on the lead code.
Punit, so I have a doubt like uh, why we inserted 0 to minus 1 initially? Yeah, so we can even skip that. If, if you've seen for 0 for the first time, then still it, it would work. But you have to handle a case when you're seeing 0 for the first time. Or please go, just go ahead. Yeah, I think what uh, he's asking is why we have replaced these zeros with minus one, or why we have set this zero to minus one. Why we set that zero to minus one in the hash map? This one, right? Yes. Yeah. So if you remember, I earlier said uh, whenever you see a sum as zero, so it essentially includes all the elements, uh, you know, before that, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's say uh, we have two elements. Uh, if I say zero and zero, right? These were cumulative sum to zero, right? Now, what was the length between these two elements was? Three minus uh, one, one, right? And then plus one. Okay. Sorry, three minus one, right? The index, the previous index minus the current index, which is essentially is two, this length. Okay. Right? Now, if I already have a zero in here, it's easier for me to just say, okay, I am at index three, and I'll subtract the original index, which is zero's original index. That'll give me a length of four. Okay, now if we, to handle this case, we... Right. If we already did not have it here, we'll have to handle it spatially, like if sum equal to zero, then the length will be actually index minus whatever is the last index, zero plus one. Okay. Right, so instead to you know ease out that process, what we are setting is zero to minus one already. Okay, okay. They think that means like all your numbers summed up to that point uh, is zero. So technically you're starting from zero to that number length. Yeah, got it. I hope this is clear now. Yeah. Uh, anything else guys that we want to discuss? I think we're done with today's problems. If you have anything else we can discuss, uh, we can end the call. Let me stop the recording. If we have any questions, we can discuss it later on.